Um, for all, the, all of you guys that uh, don't know me, my name is Alejandro. I graduated the um, Bible school, um, I believe it was a year ago. And um, I did the whole three years by the grace of God. And um, I am very excited uh, to be with you uh, today and to share a teaching that the Lord um, prompted on my heart. But I would like to start with a word of prayer, if you don't mind, uh, just closing your eyes with me. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much, Lord God, for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your presence, God. I thank you, Father, for this message. I thank you, Lord God, Father, for everything that you will do, Lord God. I pray that your Holy Spirit, Lord God, is the one that uh, touches the hearts of your people, Lord God, that it is your spirit, Lord God, the one that ministers to the people, Father, that touches their hearts, that fills them with joy, with hope, Lord God. Father, gives us wisdom, give us understanding, Lord God. Father, to, to understand what you are communicating to us, to your spirit, Lord God. Father, and I pray, Lord God, that you will give me the discernment that I need, Father God, to share this teaching, Lord God, accordingly, Father, to what you have laid on my heart, and I just pray that it's all for your glory, Father, and for your praise. And I pray that you take control over my heart, my mind, my will, and my emotions. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So um, today, um, Adalbert has um, asked me to share with you guys, by the grace of God, about uh, the character of God. And um, he also asked me if I could share a little bit about my, my testimony. And so, like I shared, my name is Alejandro, and I'm originally from Mexico. Um, currently, I am 29 years old. And, and so, when I was 22 years old, I came uh, to Canada. I got offered an opportunity to come and work for Tim Hortons. And I really wanted to, uh, to move from Mexico, and I really wanted to improve my life. So, by the grace of God, um, I came and I, I started working for Tim Hortons uh, when I was 22 years old. And when I came, um, well, number one, I want to say that when I left uh, my hometown, it was plus 35 degrees. When I came to Calgary in the middle of winter, it was minus 35. So it was a little bit of a, of a shock. Um, I never seen snow ever in my life before. So it was, uh, it was a bit of an adjustment. Uh, adjustment. And um, so I came when I was 22 years old, and I guess I was... There was a lot of things on my heart, a lot of uh, pain from, from my childhood, a lot of things that happened. My family had to live through very difficult and challenging situations when I was uh, in Mexico. And so I had a, a lot of uh, pain in my heart. And uh, I, so I started to fill the void. Uh, I tried to numb the pain that I had on my heart. And um, long story short, when I was 25 years old, I became completely addicted to drugs, alcohol, uh, crystal meth, cocaine, um, you name it. Uh, I was addicted to pornography, terrible addiction to pornography and uh, alcohol. I, basically everything that I could uh, put my hands on just to numb the pain. And I didn't know who I was. I didn't know that I had a purpose in my life. And so when I was 25, I lost my work. I lost my work visa. I lost my work permit. Um, I had uh, The government had asked me to leave the country at this point. They told me there is nothing that I could uh, that I could do right. And um, another thing that happened was that I hurt my back uh, through a workplace accident. I injured my back, and and I was just so hopeless and, and desperate, and, and I don't even know what to do. And I just remember that my mom, when I was a, a young a young boy, he used to she used to tell me, my mom used to tell me that God loved me, that God had a purpose for my life, that God had a plan. And so the darkest day of my life, I just remember crying out and saying, God, if you're real, um, I need to know because I don't want to die like this. I don't want to die at 25 years old, addicted to drugs, hopeless, depressed. And um, so a week later, as I am walking by a church, at this point, I am living in the city of Airdrie. And uh, so I was living in Airdrie and I'm walking by this, by this church and I hear, I hear a very still small voice on my heart saying, um, Alejandro, go knock on the door. Then I stood still for a moment and I heard again, it was a prompting in my heart. It was a soft a whisper uh, on my heart saying, Alejandro, go knock on the door. And I remember uh, me going and knocking on the door. And as I'm about just to knock on the door, I was, I was wearing my favorite hat at the time. And as I'm wearing my hat, 
my hat, this wind blew out of nowhere and my hat went, uh, my hat went flying for, for like a, about a block or two. So I went uh, walk and, and, and I picked up my, my hat and I'm dusting, dusting it off. And I remember it was like a spiritual battle just started in my mind, you know, like I felt on my heart that I needed to go knock on the door. But then another side of me was saying, you know, you don't need this. You don't need to ask for help. Let's go back home. Let's go to smoke some weed, you know. Uh, why are you knocking on this church? And so by the grace of God, you know, I really felt on my heart this prompting, you know, the still small voice saying, you need help. You are hopeless. You're depressed. Trust me. And, and all of this happening in one instant, right? And I just remember saying like, no, 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 I need to go knock on the door of this church. And so I knock on the door and the lady that opened the door, it was um, the first thing she says to me, she says, um, what's your name? And I say, my name is Alejandro. And, and she says, uh, where are you from? I said, I am from Mexico. And she starts speaking Spanish to me. Mucho gusto, como estas? Dios te bendiga. And I say, wow, how come you speak Spanish so well if you're Canadian? And she said to me, because I did missionary work in Guanajuato, Mexico, and I am from Guanajuato, Mexico, um, exactly the same, same place. So she invited me over to her church um, and she just loved on me, just loved on me, never judged me, never criticized me. Um, at this point, my hair was long, my teeth were falling apart, my clothes were all dirty and ragged. And all that she did was that she loved on me and she was um, caring for me and she fed me and everything. And so she told me about a rehab center close, uh, called the Dream Center, excuse me, so called the Dream Center. And I came, uh, I came and I applied to the Dream Center Addictions Program. And it was, um, um, at, that, at that moment, uh, there was a waiting list. There was a waiting list of people that wanted to, to come into the program. It was a youth program. And uh, so I said to her, I said, Linda, I don't know where to stay. Where am I gonna wait? Uh, these two months because it was two months in order for me to start the program that was uh, how much I needed to wait so she said to me I really feel on my heart that God wants you to go to the mustard seed homeless shelter and I said okay and I remember she drove me to the mustard seed uh, homeless shelter uh, shelter on the industrial area and I remember my first week there I met another lady from El Salvador um, Spanish, uh, Latino, older lady. Uh, she's a beautiful grandma. And, and the first thing that she says when she lays eyes on me, she says, young man, do you believe in God? And all in Spanish. And I remember saying, I am trying. I am trying. She said, um, have you ever been to a Christian church? I said, no. She said to me, I'm going to take you to my church, but don't tell anyone because I work here and I could get in trouble. I, I'm, I'm a custodian. I'm, I'm part of the cleaning team. And I could get fired, so I said, okay. And uh, so she waited for me at the bus stop, I'll never forget. And we drove to this church, and I remember the first thing that I noticed is that people are playing electric guitar and keyboards and drums, and there was such a joy in the environment. People, once the service started, people started lifting their hands, praising the Lord, and, and, and it was just like a freedom and a joy that it was in that place. And so I sat, I sat right in front with her. I sat right at the front with her. And I remember as, as the service started, they started playing this beautiful worship song, a uh, Spanish song called A Tus Pies, which basically just says that when you are at the feet of Jesus, nobody can criticize you, nobody can point fingers at you, that he loves you, that he created you for a purpose, for a destiny. And I'm listening to the words of this song and my heart started getting uh, really, really warm, like on fire. And I start feeling this, this presence that I never experienced before. And all of a sudden, the pastor lady that was singing this worship song, she started she started to, to minister to people, and she started to say that God loves you, that He has a plan for your life, that He forgives you, that you're not in a place that is too dark where He cannot come with His hand and reach you, take you out of that darkness, bring you into His love, into His light. And she said that Jesus died on the cross to to die for all of our sins, from my cocaine addiction, crystal meth addiction, depression anxiety and all of these things, all of my hurt and all of my pain, but he came back to life the third day so that can, he can give me his spirit and that his spirit can come inside of my heart, make me a new man, make me a new creation with a new mind, with a new everything. And only that, that I have the promise of eternal life so that I can go with heaven with him one day. And as I'm listening to these words, I just remember my heart started to get so warm, 
so warm and I just remember I just got on my knees and I said, God, I'm such a broken man, but here I am. And I remember this presence just coming upon me uh, so strong. I remember feeling this, 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 just this, the presence of the Lord. I started feeling joy and hope and love and acceptance and forgiveness and kindness. And oh my God, it was just so indescribable. And, and I just remember I started crying. Um, I never cried in over 10 years. The way that I was, that I grew up in Mexico, it was like uh, men don't cry. And at this moment, I'm crying and I'm just letting it all go. Like, ah, I'm just crying so hard. And um, so I'm crying so hard and, and boogers and everything running down my nose. And, and the pastor um, notices me and he says, um, we're going to have to stop worship for a second. And he comes to me and he says to me, young man, have you, um, uh, he puts his hand on me and says, young man, have you been walking through a desert in your life? And I said, yes. And he says to me, would you like to receive Jesus in your heart? I said, yes. And I remember we did the prayer. And at that very moment, it's the first time in my life that I experienced peace in my heart. And I remember it's the first time ever I experienced peace that I couldn't understand. And this, this, this huge black hole that I carry on my heart everywhere was completely filled with the love of God. And ever since that day, just God radically changed my life. Um, I came to this rehab program. I graduated by the grace of God. And at this point, I'm an illegal immigrant. Uh, the government had asked me to leave. No work permit, nothing. Um, I was homeless. I, I, I had a fall into addiction. But anyway, I graduated this program at the Calgary Dream Center. And I remember praying to the Lord with one of our brothers uh, here. Uh, brother Wayne, who also assists uh, to our school, and he's also <coughs> he uh, he comes to me one day and says to me, Alejandro, I really feel in my heart that God wants you to pray for your papers. So we remember just crying out to the Lord and praying that God had a purpose for my life, that He saved me from that darkness for a reason, and there was a plan for me. And I remember after we did that prayer, the CEO of the Calgary Dream Center calls me to his office, his name is Jim Moore, and, and he calls me to his office and he says to me, Alejandro, I need you to tell me the truth. Are you an illegal Mexican? And I said, yes. And he says to me, praise the Lord. And I said, uh, what, what are you saying? Uh, I said, that is not very good news. But he said to me, you know what? Um, I wanted to tell you this, that God has shown so much grace in my life that I want to show you grace. And we're going to sponsor you to stay in Canada. I'm going to give you a job. I'm going to give you everything yeah. that you need in, in order for you to, to, to stay here. And you don't have to worry about anything, right? And um, we're going to help you out. So just get a lawyer because we need to get a lawyer involved um, because of your situation. And uh, so I remember same thing, saying like, well, praise the Lord. Thank you so much, God. You know, just believing and trusting <coughs> in the Lord and that everything was going to work out for, for good, you know. And I remember uh, I went to my church one day. Um, I go to a Spanish church, and 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 one of and, and a friend of mine tells me, I have a, an excellent immigration lawyer. Do you need one? I said yes. And so he gives me his phone number. It's a Mexican uh, fellow, also from um, oh yeah, also from Mexico. He works uh, off Montreal. He's based off Montreal, and he's one of the best immigration uh, lawyers in, Ca in in Canada. And so I got in contact with him. And amazing, amazing person too. And so he says to me, Alejandro, I need a thousand dollars upfront in order for you to start your process of immigration. And I said, okay, sure. And so just praying and believing. Um, and then after praying, another friend of mine, um, my friend Alberto from my church, comes to me one day and he says to me, you know what? I heard about your case and um, I wanted to tell you that I want to help you out. God spoke to my heart, so I want to give you a thousand dollars. So you can apply for your lawyer so you can stay in Canada, become a Canadian resident. And yes, no, no, word, no word of a lie, he comes to me with an envelope with a thousand dollars and puts it on my hand. And at this point, I'm just like, oh, my gosh, you know, it was uh, amazing. You know, it was unbelievable. And all, the only way I can describe it, it, it was that, that God was working in my life. And, and at this point, I'm just a young believer. Right. And uh, but every step of the way, God starts sending the right people at the right time and the right person at the right time. To love me and to pour on me and and and, and just to to show me basically the character of, of who god is that he's a heavenly father he's our abba mm -hmm. he's he loves us so much he has a purpose he has a destiny he has a plan for your life 
And um, by the grace of God, you know, uh, one of our friends here from the Dream Center invited me to the Calgary Bible Training Center. And uh, I started attending school and graduated from the whole three years. And after I graduated, by the grace of God, the Lord opened the opportunity for me to come and teach the Bible on the same rehab center that I, that I attended uh, four years ago. So that was uh, four years ago where I, where I attended the, the Dream Center. And now after graduating from, from, the, from the school, from the Calgary Bible Training Center, the Lord opened the door for me to come and teach. Uh, uh, to teach the guys that are in program, that are on the same program that I took, and just to encourage them in their faith and in, 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 in the love of God and, and in the recovery, and just to tell them that God loves them, that it has a purpose for their lives, and just to really open up the, scripture, the scriptures and realize for ourselves through the help of the Holy Spirit, what is that the scripture has to say about who I am? Because many times, you know, and I, I remember myself too, um, growing up in Mexico, um, I heard about God, but all that I heard was uh, religion, and, and I never knew for myself, you know, and, and by the grace of God, the way that God uh, rescued me and saved me, I could really understand that God is not a God of rules and religion, but He's a God of relationship and a God of mm -hmm. grace and forgiveness, and He yeah. take your, takes your ashes and He turns them into beauty, and, mm -hmm. and, and He gives you a second, third, fourth chance, right? And when I start reading the word with the help of the Holy Spirit, I start realizing that truth, you know, because uh, the Bible says in John 1 that, that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So he himself is his word and he himself stays true to his character of who he is. So today in this teaching that the Lord um, has laid on my heart, I want us to go to First John um, chapter 4. We're going to read verse seven and we're gonna read verse eight and we're just gonna we're just gonna um talk about about uh what love is and 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 what what is the biblical definition of love and then a little bit um and after that we're gonna talk about hope and we're gonna talk about, about uh, endurance and encouragement especially because of the times that we're living because sometimes we can feel like, oh my God, I'm doing my best. I'm, I'm, I'm reading my Bible. I'm praying. I'm spending time with the Lord. I'm doing everything that he asked me, but things are, are, are hard and are difficult. And so we're going we're gonna, to um, look at this with the eyes and the perspective of the scriptures so that we can be encouraged and, then, and that the hope of God can be put into our hearts. But first of all, we're going to read First John chapter 4 verses 7 and 8 and it says beloved let us love one another for love is of god and everyone who loves is born of god and knows god he who does not love does not know god for god is love and the whole course that adalbert created for the calgary bible training center about the character of god is based on this verse, um, meaning that God is love, and this is his character. So we're going to see the scripture with the lenses and with the eyes well, um, of, 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 of love, of, of the character of God being uh, love, right? And in verse number 7 and 8, when it talks about knowing God, in these verses, when you read your Bible, I was reading in my study Bible, it's talking about a very intimate, personal relationship with God that and, and that only can happen, the only way we can have truly and, and really intimate relationship with God, where we can really truly discover his character and who he is, is through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that's been put into our hearts is the one who reveals his character and the one that, that uh, helps us discover him and, 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 and who he is in our lives and, and really uh, helps us grow intimately in our relationship with him. So... God is love, and this is what the whole basis of, of this class is for today. Um, as we read in 1 John 4, 7 and 8, um, it's very important for us to be born of God in order to discover his character, in order to discover his love. We know that in John chapter 3, Nicodemus, uh, a Pharisee, a religious leader, comes to Jesus and asks him, how can old man become born again? And Jesus told, tells him about becoming uh, being born again of the spirit and water 
and, and, and nobody knows where the wind blows um, or, or where it's coming from, right? In the same way that we are born of the spirit, what maybe we don't know exactly um, how, how, how it works overall, but we can trust that the spirit of God moves just like the wind. And then when, when we receive Christ in our hearts, that is, the Bible says that those who receive Christ in their hearts, the spirit of God dwells in them and lives in them. So by receiving Jesus in our hearts by faith and, and, and receiving his spirit, the Bible says that we become born again. So becoming born again is crucial and it's essential in order for us to get the revelation of the love of God and truly know him intimately, like these verses on 7 and 8 are talking about. So God is love, like it says at the end of verse number 8. And this is his essence. And for this, um, the definition, of love according to the Bible we're gonna open our Bibles in 1st Corinthians 13 verses 4 and 7 so that's 1st Corinthians and I'm gonna read from the New King James um, New King James Version Bible 1st Corinthians mm -hmm. chapter 13 13 and then we're gonna read verses Four to seven. And this is a very well-known uh, passage of scripture. But I really felt the Lord putting on my heart that this is what love should look like. For us as believers, for, for us loving one another, for us resembling who God is in our daily lives. So 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 4 to 7 says, Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy love does not parade itself is not puffed up does not behave rudely does not seek its own is not provoked thinks no evil does not rejoice in iniquity but rejoices in the truth bears all things believes all things hopes all things endures all things and this is the kind of love that God is. He is all of these qualities. He is all of uh, all of this single one of these qualities of what God's saying that he is. He is all of them. He suffers long. He is patient. God is patient. And, and he's the one that teaches us patience, which is a fruit, uh, part of the fruit of the spirit. Uh, kindness. And then we can see the, uh, we can see part of the, the things that he mentions in here. Uh, love is patient or suffers long. Love is kind, does not em envy, does not parade itself or boasts, is not, is not arrogant, is not rude, does not seek its own, thinks no evil or keeps no record of wrongs, um, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. And how many of us can we say that we are all of these qualities? Me, myself, when I look at myself, I say, man, I believe that I'm not there yet and I believe that God is working in me because when I see all of these qualities that what is the perfect love of God that I should be manifesting to other people like being kind when people are not kind to me to not be envy when others are doing better than me all of these things that that, that God says that he is in, 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 in the qualities of what love, love should look like according to him. Uh, I know that I'm not there, right? But I believe that the Holy Spirit works in me every day. And the Bible says that he's creating his character in me. So he's shaping me. He's, he's molding me just like the pot maker. The pot maker puts the clay, uh, um, the clay, and then he starts shaping it and molding it. And then, and then he makes a beautiful jar made of clay with his hands. And so God is the one who shapes us, who molds us through his spirit. And he's the one that is that is able to create all of these things in our character. You could say, um, before I was not that kind to people, but now I am more kind to people. Uh, now I realize that I don't envy anymore. Now I realize that I'm not arrogant anymore, but by the grace of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit has become humble in me and I'm able to show humility. This is God working his character in you through his presence, through his spirit. So we're going to... Out of, out of all of these things, like I mentioned, right, because the Lord really uh, prompted on my heart because of the times that we're living on right now and the things, uh, just this, this pandemic situation. And then um, we're, we're living in a very, very, very hard times uh, right now and in Calgary also as well with some laws that they're just approved. And 
in the United States, some, some issues that are happening where, where there is no unity, right? Um, the Lord really prompted on my heart to, to talk about hope and endurance, right? So we're going to focus on the last two things in there where it mentions in 1 Corinthians uh, 13, 4 and 7. At the end of chapter, uh, at the end of verse 7, it, it says, um, hopes all things and endures all things. So we're going we're gonna to see how the love of God working in all it's going to help us um, grow in our hope and it's going to grow help us grow in our endurance so in these uh, circumstances that we're living right now in life it's very easy to get discouraged right and I know myself with this pandemic I'm living on a place where where we share accommodations with 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 a lot of the guys um, I'm still living at the dream center I'm not part of I'm, I'm not part of the program I'm part of their living facility they have a, a living facility here they have a a building where they house 120 men, uh, where they give them a room and, and help them uh, get on their feet. And it's an amazing, amazing place. You get your own room. It's beautiful accommodations. We get three meals a day. And uh, so, but it's very easy when we get uh, uh, closed in a closed environment, especially with, this, with spiritual warfare that we, that, we, that we face every day as children and sons of God, as daughters of God. It's very easy to get discouraged. And when we get discouraged, what happens um, is that the world, that the, the way that we see the world, the eyes uh, that we see the, the world with, um, uh, they're not, they're not uh, through, through discouragement, they're not looking at things. They're not looking at things with the right perspective, right? So when we get discouraged, we, lost, we lose our perspective of things. And when we lose our perspective of things, when things start looking unsurmountable, when things start looking dark, then we become hopeless, right? So how can love uh, hope all things, right? Well, we're gonna see in here that the way that, that when we're hopeless, the way that God brings that, that, that hope into our hearts, um, there's, a, there's an amazing uh, preacher that I really like. His name is uh, Charles R. Swindle. Uh, Charles R. Swindle, I have one of his books, and he says that when, when, we, don't ha when we have a heart that doesn't have hope, we need a transplant, just like a surgery. The surgeon comes, opens, and takes the, the old heart, the heart that has no hope, and places a new one. So this is what, what, what we need. And how do we achieve this hope? How can we get this hope? Well, the Bible teaches us that it is through the Word of God. The Word of God is the one that is going to help you get the, the right perspective of things. The Word of God is the one that is going to place that amazing hope into your heart. So for this, we need to go to Romans 15, and, and Romans 15, and we're going to read verse number four. And first, I'm going to read from um, the NASB version, and then I'm going to read it from the New King James Version. So that is Romans 15, and then we're going to read verse number four. So the... New American Standard Bible um, says it like this, for whatever was written in earlier times was written for our instruction so that through perseverance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. Now, when we read this verse in the, in the New, King James, uh, New King James Version, it says patience and Comfort. It, it uses the word patience instead of perseverance, and it uses the word comfort instead of encouragement. But if you study the scriptures, the original um, that the scriptures were, were written in, uh, the New Testament was mostly written in, in Greek. The word that it used for patience could also be trans, uh, translated as perseverance. So we can say that uh, for whatever was written in earlier times, was written for our instruction so that through perseverance and the encouragement of the scriptures, encouragement or comfort of the scriptures, we might have hope. So in here we can, we can see right away that it is through the word of God, it is through reading the word of God that that hope is going to come back into our hearts whenever we don't have, uh, whenever we don't have um, hope whenever we're feeling hopeless and 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 love and hope they go they, they go they go hand in hand even paul in one of his verses he says he says when everything else 
else uh, um, goes, uh, three things remain uh, uh, hope, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Um, something in the in the in the lines of that uh, that is an on um, that was on on, on First Corinthians thirteen thirteen. Uh, now abide now abide faith, hope, and love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. So we can see that love and hope they go they go very hand in hand. But in here, when it talks about um, um, this discouragement and and being hopeless, it is to to look in at the scripture because just like it says here, anything that is written in here is written to instruct us, right? So that through perseverance and encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. The scriptures are going to encourage you. But how do you get perseverance? Perseverance is a spiritual component that only God can give you. When you spend time with him, when you spend time in prayer, God is the one that is going to fill your heart, fill your spirit with that perseverance, right? And you might say, I don't have any endurance. I don't have any encouragement. Um, how do I get any of those things? Now we need to look. We can look at verse, um, um, the next verse. Romans 15, 15, that says, Now the God who gives perseverance and encouragement grant you to be of the same mind with one another according to Christ Jesus, right? Like I said, the New King James Bible vers uh, version uses uh, patience and comfort, but patience could be trans translated or as perseverance and comfort could be also translated as encouragement. Comfort actually, literally, in the, in the New Testament Bible, means encouragement. So when we don't have um, perseverance and we don't have encouragement, we can read this verse, Romans 15, 5. Now the God who gives perseverance and encouragement grant you to be of the same mind with one another according to Christ Jesus. So God wants to give us, gives us perseverance and God wants to give us encouragement. This is what God is, his character. He wants to do life with us. He wants to be with us. He doesn't let you down whenever you're feeling hopeless. He doesn't say, oh, Alejandro, you're hopeless. Well, good for you. No, he stays there with me. He's there right along walking with me, walking with all of us. All that he's saying is that we need to look for instructions in his word because it is through his word that our hearts are going to become filled with hope. And then when we read uh, num number six, Romans 15, Verse number six, so that's the next verse. It says, so that you with one accord, you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So in here we can say that God wants to give you perseverance and encouragement. God wants you to leave that, that area of hopelessness and become filled with hope. And at the same time, when we become filled with hope, that brings unity in the body of Christ because it brings uh, it makes us with one mind, with one accord, give glory and praise to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, right? So whenever we're hopeless and another brother of mine is hopeless, we go to the scripture, we go to the presence of God, we get encouraged, we get perseverance from the Lord, and then we can go to one another and say, Jonathan, guess what happened? You know, I was feeling like this, but then the Lord rescued me from that. And then Jonathan is going to say, praise the Lord, brother. I was feeling the same. And then I went to the scripture and I read a verse that just totally changed my life. And this is how we encourage one another. And we both, with the same mind, with the same unity, we say, wow, brother, praise the Lord. That is amazing. So now I want us to read uh, Philippians. If we can go quickly to Philippians 2, we're going to read verses 1 and 2 from the book of Philippians. Philippians 2, we're going to read. Philippians 2, chapter 2, we're going to read verses 1 and 2. and says, Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, like having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. So in here, Paul is writing to the Philippian church. In this moment in his life, he's in jail. But he's writing to this church and he's saying, if you really want to make my joy complete, just keep the same mind. Just keep the same heart. Just keep the same accord and worship the Lord together with one heart. And, and this is what, what unity is so important in the, in, the, in, the, in the body of Christ.
Christ and unity comes with with hope and unity comes by 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 sharing with one another what God has done in your life because what what God what God has done in your life when you share it that will inspire another person and will change their life as well so in here we can we can see that God gives us instructions when we need it right and and when God speaks to you and it's give you an instruction we need to move we must accept these instructions and we need to apply them to our lives like we read Romans 15 uh, Romans chapter 15 verses 4 to 6, six have been uh, very important in my life um, I, I got uh, I got these these verses from a book that a friend of mine gave me uh, the, the name of the book is the secret of facing hard days um, it's called the secret of facing hard days by Charles R. R. Swindle and uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right but uh, Charles R. Swindle and, and he talks about this, right? And so I got these verses right when I was in a time of my life where I was very, very hopeless and I was facing a lot of uh, discouragement. So these verses right here uh, really, really will help you and encourage you and, 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 and they're instructions, you know? So when we receive these instructions, we need to move and we need to apply them in our lives. So again i'm gonna i'm gonna say it, uh say it um what i was sharing at first you know discouragement brings uh loss of perspective and loss of perspective brings hopelessness the word gives you perspective and a heart full of hope just like we're talking about you used to have that heart that was full of hopelessness it gets removed and then the holy spirit puts a heart full of hope through the scriptures through spending time in the presence of the lord his word will give you instructions God will give you perseverance. Remember, perseverance is a spiritual component that comes to prayer, to intimacy with the, with the Holy Spirit, with the Lord. He will give you perseverance in your heart. Well, God will give you an encouragement. Encouragement comes from being encouraged by the scriptures. Um, when you read the scriptures and, 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 and we, when you don't know what to do, cast, cast your burdens onto the Lord because he cares for you. Right? I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Um, all of these verses, for I was not given the spirit of, of, of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. All of these scriptures that come to your heart, they're, they're, they're scriptures that God gives you to encourage you, right? So the scriptures will give you encouragement. And it says that his word will encourage you. The end result is hope. A hopeful heart that is encouraged and has his perspective. And also unity with others. So in order to have hope, we really need to look at the scripture. We, need, we really need to, to spend time with the Lord and ask him, Lord, what are you going to tell me through scriptures? Where do I go in scripture for the, for the season that I'm on my life that I don't understand what's happening? I need to go scripture. I need a scripture all the time in my life. While when I'm facing circumstances that I don't know, I said, Lord, where is the scripture? Where is the scripture? And sure enough, a few days later, the Holy Spirit will lead me and I will find something in the Bible that it speaks right through the heart of the circumstance that I'm living. And I know that it's God moving in my life because I've been asking the Holy Spirit, where is the scripture? Where is the scripture? So God will bring that perseverance in your heart and that encouragement and, 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 and that will give you hope. And remember, love, hopes, uh, love, uh, the, the love of God that talks about the, 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 the first verse that we read there in First Corinthians is that, that love hopes all things, you know? So again, love is the character of God and he hopes all things. But we, as we're growing in Christ, when we get discouraged and we need to get that hope, we get him from, from the scripture. So application of, of these instructions that come from Romans 15, 4 is going to bring change to your life. If we need circumstances to change, we need to apply these things. Just not let them sit, sit there, but apply them, right? And hope, hope comes by listening to God and doing um, what he, um, sorry, hope by listening to God and doing this so apply what we just learned we need to apply it to our lives and and in return he's gonna he's gonna give you what he has promised what he promised at first and that was to give you to give you hope um, right now here at the dream center I, I don't know if you have heard it in China firm we have a campaign that um, that is that is uh, that is about hope you know choose hope and 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 it's a little yellow button that, that everybody here at the Dream Center is wearing around the building just to bring an encouragement 
um, around the city, and it's just uh, and it's just a choose hope, right? And and the the Lord really was really talking to me about that. You know, whenever I feel uh, depressed or I feel anxious or or, or things are not working uh, good on my life, what I can do is I can choose hope and I can turn to the Word of God, and then uh, I know for sure if I apply these instructions as the Lord guides me, I'm gonna be encouraged. And um, so, Jonathan, at what time do we take break? Is it eight o'clock? What time do we break? Uh, eight fifteen. Eight fifteen. Awesome. So we still have a little bit of time. Awesome. So now we're gonna look at. Uh, we talk already about hope. Now we're gonna talk about a little bit about endurance. And if we go back, right? Um, just to wh where am I getting all this? Well, the verse that we just read on First Corinthians thirteen. Uh, seven at the end it says that love endures all things so for for endurance um, the Lord really lay on my heart, heart um, to talk about endurance um, with you today uh, praise the Lord um, if we can turn our Bibles uh, go back to first John first John 4 7 and 8 so those are the first verses that uh, that we read that we read when we started our teaching um, uh, 1 John 4, verses 7 and 8. Beloved, let us love one another, for, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. So remember, this is our, our verse that is our guidance uh, for our teaching today as well with the one in first corinthians uh 13 and and so when he talks talks about uh you know again in in, in, in verse 7 here first john 4 chapter uh, verse 7 when it talks about being born of god it, it's that spiritual birth that that uh, that we were talking about in, in john 3 we really need that spiritual awakening in our hearts why because we that spiritual awakening in our hearts becoming born again Will enable you to have a deep relationship with god like deep the bible says draw near to god and god will draw near to you so if you purpose in your heart just like daniel did when he was in babylon you purpose in your heart to accomplish something just like daniel did you purpose in your heart to spend time with the lord and, and draw near to him the lord will draw near to you and, and 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 it's the spirit of god who enables us to know him in an intimate way the same way in verse number eight, uh, when he talks uh, about here, uh, verse number eight, he who does not love does not know God, for God is love. So again, you know, when he talks about knowing God, is is that intimate? The 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 Bible language that is used here, the way the the Bible was originally originally uh, wrote in here, is talking when it talks about knowing God, is an intimate, intimate relationship. So in order to become the love God wants us to become, first we must become born again. We must become born again to become love. We ourselves become love. We, we become the character of Jesus so we can show it to other people. We become the love of Jesus so we can go and love others according to how Jesus loved us. Right? There's a verse in scripture, and it's actually right here in 1 John 4, 17. Love has been perfected among us in this that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. So just as Jesus was, just as Jesus uh, loved people in the world, so we need to love people in the world. And having an intimate relationship with God will give you endurance as well. And uh, like we were reading before uh, about endurance, even when we, when we were reading before there in Romans 15:5 that God is the one that will give you uh, the endurance that you need to face the hard circumstances in your life. And, and, and spending time in prayer, spending time with him, that will, that will bring that endurance to your life. So now I just want us to look at Romans 5, um, verses 3 to 5. And it talks about a little bit about um, endurance, which endurance goes hand in hand with the character of God. Sorry, I'm going to grab a sip of my water here. Ah, praise the Lord. So, 
just going to read the scripture here in Romans 5. And then again, it's a very famous uh, passage of scripture. But uh, I know that you, are, most of you guys or, or um, many of you have heard it. And I know that many of you are well uh, know, many of you know the scriptures very well. So I just pray that the spirit of the Lord uh, will help me uh, deliver this teaching according to what God laid on my heart. So Romans 5, 3 to 5 says, um, and not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance or endurance. Here in the New King James Bible version, which is the study Bible, it says that this word perseverance could be trans translated as endurance, um, literary uh, endurance. And, per and perseverance or endurance produces character. And character, hope. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So in these, in these verses, we can see how hope, endurance, and love are mentioned, you know, and, and they're uh, hand in hand together because love is, is, is the character of God. And, 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 and in a relationship with him, when we get this courage, he wants to fill us with that hope. So I'm going to read that one more time. Um, and we not, sorry, verse number three, five, three. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribula tribulations produces endurance and endurance character or approved character and character hope. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So in here we can see that that um, God is talking about um, uh, endurance, right? When we were talking about endurance, uh, first we talk about hope. Now we're talking about an endurance. Endurance um, will 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 create uh, perseverance, and perseverance will create um, perseverance will create character in you, and that character is the character of God, and that character is the one that is going to bring as well hope in your life you know so god says that his love hopes all things and that his hope loves uh, his his love endures all things and and it's all tied together with his character you know sometimes in life um we uh we're gonna we're gonna face uh circumstances that are not easy you know and especially you know i, I love the story of job because Job was a man that he was doing everything right. And all of a sudden, he went through a huge trial in his life. Not because he had sinned. The Bible says that he was a righteous man in the eyes of God. But because God needed to work something maybe in his heart. And at the end of his story, we can see the story of restoration. And, and how God restored him and healed him in his heart. And I love it that he says, before I knew you uh, with, my, with, with my ears. But now I have seen you right so we can see that through the whole process of job at the end of the day he came to know god on a more more intimate le uh, level because before he heard about him but now he has seen him with his own eyes and when he presented to him god presented uh himself to to job in the whirlwind and spoke to him right but but really job got the the, the, the revelation of his who, what his character was also i like the story about joseph Right, he, he was a man that was chosen for a great task, being a leader in Egypt and becoming the prime minister of Egypt, but he had to go through jail, right? Why? Because because his his character needed to be to be to be tested and his character needed to be perfected because of the great task that he was gonna be commanded to do to lead all of the people of God. And and as well um, with David, you know, he was he was called to become a king, but there was a time in his life where he was hiding on a cave. And, and sometimes in our lives, we might be saying, uh, God, what's going on? You know, I, 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 I'm, I'm being obedient. I'm doing everything that you, that, you, that, you, that you ask me to do. I'm spending time in the word, in your presence, and things are not looking up uh, uh, right. I'm going to tell you that if you're doing exactly what God told you to do and you're being obedient, you can have comfort because God has an amazing plan and destiny prepared for your life. He's just about to release something great in you and he's going to bring healing and restoration in many areas of your life that you don't even think about. 
because sometimes in the midst of trials and tribulation, God uses that to really heal very deep wounds and to, to really work in our minds and to really work in our character. Uh, we're going to read um, uh, in a little bit here, uh, maybe um, right before when we go to, to our break, how the testing of our faith, right? The, the testing of our faith also as well, it's going to produce that endurance and that, that endurance that is going to produce a, a character, a character just like God. What kind of character? A character that can endure all things, that, that can hope all things, that, that can do all things to Christ, right? And, and so with endurance, like I was sharing, you know, uh, we're going to go through hard circumstances in life and it's part of the process. I believe that all of us will go through a process where God really needs to really work in our hearts. And many of us have been through the fire. But many of us can testify that God has never let us alone in the fire. He has always been walking with us alongside, that he has never left us, never forsaken us, that never, for, never even for a moment were we forsaken. But God was right there with us to watch over our life, to watch over our soul. Even when the enemy says, oh, is this your God that has you in this circumstance? Is this your God that has not provided for you? This is when your faith gets tested. And, 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 and my faith also as well uh, has, has been tested, I guess, like 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 all of us you know um so long story short just talking about how 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 trials and tribulation produces uh character before coming into the pandemic i've been waiting for my permanent residency for three and a half years and right before the pandemic i was called to the government to go sign my papers to finally receive everything to be official and signed so that i can become officially a resident of canada and i was so excited and i remember I was just uh, amazing. My friend Brian, his wife, I was going to receive it at the same day. We were planning to go celebrate and it was going to be huge. And I remember this pandemic happened and all of a sudden the government sent me an email saying that um, I'm not able to go anymore because everything is being postponed. And I remember saying, God, I've been waiting for three and a half years. What happened? And I remember getting so upset at the Lord. You know, I, I got upset at the Lord. But um, at the same moment, you know, uh, the Lord took me through it. You know, the Lord took me through it through, through His Holy Spirit, through His grace. Uh, I really believe that God was really testing my character. Uh, are you going to get upset, Alejandro, when things don't work the way you wanted them to work at the time that you wanted them to work exactly the way that you were planning? No, I, 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 I had to learn to release these things and to say, Lord, whatever is the ministry that you have for me, whatever is the, pr the purpose that you have for me, whenever that you want to give me my residence, that is good with me and and that's what the lord really showed me through this season the enemy will come like a flood to try to tell you like what you've been waiting two and a half years and and then this happens like is god not faithful with you or those are lies from the enemy we need to take every thought captive into the obedience of christ and to really set our minds on him and say what does my god has to say about this don't worry, Alejandro. The Holy Spirit will always speak to you. Don't worry, Alejandro. Everything is going to be okay. Just trust in the Lord. And for this, I really needed the Holy Spirit. You know, I remember a time that I couldn't even, I really, in my heart, really, really even didn't feel like, like, like I could worship the Lord just because I let discouragement and hopelessness to get into my heart. Like we were talking about being discouraged and hopeless. But in a moment, in a moment where, where I was feeling so overwhelmed, I just remember saying, Holy Spirit, help me. That's the only words that I said. And I felt this supernatural peace and calmness on my heart. And I got on my knees and I remember I was I was working. I work part-time in a, a kitchen here at the Dream Center. So I work part-time uh, cleaning the kitchen and I also volunteer teaching the word by the grace of God. But I was cleaning the kitchen at night and I remember I just stopped everything that I was doing. I got on my knees and I started just praising the Lord because I was so overwhelmed. I was so overwhelmed, so hopeless that I said, Holy Spirit, I need your help right now. And he did come and he did comfort me and he did stretch my faith and I did grow by the grace of God. And I've learned so many things through this pandemic and through this situation. By the grace of God, last Monday, I received an email from the government saying, Alejandro, your residency has been approved. You don't need to come for an, for an interview. You're already a Canadian resident. Um, praise the Lord. It says, um, yeah, congratulations. You're a Canadian resident now. You can use this document as an official document um, for you to show people that, that, that you're all, all legal now. And, and, and I was like amazed, you know, just amazed saying, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. 
you know, two months after, you know, just when I thought that everything was lost, just right two months after, and I didn't have to even go to an interview that God provided everything that I, that I, that I needed and that he provided everything that, that he said that he would. So, yeah, I went to, to, to just like in here in Romans 5, when it talks about, we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces endurance or perseverance. And, and so that endurance that God created in me uh, helped me work on my character to understand that his ways are better than my ways and that it doesn't necessarily need to happen all when I, when I, want, when I want it to happen, right? But then it says in here uh, that once he works in your character, character produces hope. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in, your, in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So just the Lord really put on my heart that whenever we're facing circumstances that are challenging, like we're sharing, um, like we were sharing, uh, we need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. We need to be constantly filled with the Holy Spirit. We need to focus on the things of God. Uh, the Holy Spirit is the one, the, the hope that is talking about here in this verse in Romans 5, it's talking about the hope that is for eternal life. At the end of the day, these things will pass, but our spirit is going to live forever from glory to glory with the Lord Jesus Christ in eternity. Our spirit, our soul is going to go back home with him. And this is a hope that nobody can steal. And this is a hope that we must believe. And this is a, a, a hope that we keep in our hearts that is going to help us to understand that this, that this world is going to pass. But you and me, by the grace of God, are going to be reunited in heaven one day with God. Not only that, that hope that is produced in your heart, the, the hope that it talks about here in the Bible, in, in Romans uh, 5 and, and as well, uh, uh, the, the verses that we just read in Romans 15, God, God really needs to work in your character, but that will produce a hope that is going to fill your heart to believe that God will, God will give you everything that he promised. If he promised you a home, he promised you a ministry, he promised you a car, he promised you something that was going to happen in your finances or with your children, or maybe some things are not going right at, at, right at the moment. They're, they're not the way that you wanted them to work. But if God promised, it means that he will do it. We just need to trust him. We just need to trust him. And just to end up before our break, I just want to read very quickly Romans 8, chapter uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 24. It says, For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. But hope that is, uh, yeah, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for uh, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. So we eagerly wait for the promises of God with endurance, with perseverance, with hope. And, and, and that is um, just um, waiting on the Lord. Like whenever we have received a prophetic word, as many of us have, that the Lord is going to use us in ministry or use you in ministry, that God is going to give you the home that he promised that God is going to take you to your back, back to your country, give you the papers that you need, uh, give you a citizenship, give you a residency that you really desperately need. If God spoke to it, he believe, believed that when he has said it, he is going to do it. Because he, 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 the Bible says that he's not a man that he should lie or a son of man that he, that he needs to repent, right? So when, we ha when he has spoken something, it means that he will do it. I want to read that one more time. For we were saved in this hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? So we might not see the promises with our, with our eyes, but we know in our spirit, we know in our hearts that are coming. But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. We eagerly wait for it with endurance. Waiting on the Lord we need to be obedient to, to the things that, that God has, has, has called us to, to do. We need, the, we need to wait on the Lord by being obedient, doing the things that he has asked you to do, like prayer, read your word, keep doing the job that you're doing for a little while. And when we, when we do the things that he has asked us to do, we can be assured that we are on his path and that his promises are on our way. Praise the Lord. So I think that's... Um, 
break time almost. Is it? One more minute. One minute, yeah. Okay, yeah, so when we wait on the Lord, it's very important just to, to, to have an intimacy with Him. Spend time with prayer, spend time in meditation. And when we pray, not only just speak, but also quiet down and really listen and hear for that still small voice that wants to whisper to your heart, that wants to minister to you. And whenever we're facing circumstances in life that we do not understand, we pray for wisdom, we pray for understanding. We say, God, give me the scripture. Give me the scripture that I need to face the storm that I'm facing on right now in my life. Praise the Lord. Okay. So we're going to take a break of 10 minutes, and I guess we, we can go to the washroom and drink some water. And uh, I'll see you guys uh, back, and we'll have uh, another half an hour, and then we'll have time for, for questions. Praise the Lord. Yeah, for the second part of, uh, of our teaching, it's going to be uh, just, uh, just to tie it up in a few things. And uh, we're going to leave uh, some time for... Um, questions and answers uh, by the grace of God. So like we were talking about uh, waiting on the Lord, right? Um, just like we were reading, reading there in uh, Romans, Romans 8, um, verse 24, that is talking about uh, uh, when we wait with hope, uh, we wait uh, with perseverance. We're waiting with perseverance on the Lord. And um, one of the things that I've learned in my walk with the Lord is that we really just need to be obedient to the to the things that, that God is asking us to do in a season of our lives. For example, you know, there's um, even things. Um, I remember back in the day when I started at school uh, with Adalbert um, that there was words about me. One day you're going to be teaching a class at the Calgary Bible Training Center. And at first I was like, me? Like, Really? And then, and then believing that word, you know, just believing what God said. And, and because I felt like I was so disqualified, like I didn't, I didn't even feel like I was worthy. And then God really dealt with my heart and say, you're worthy because I am worthy. And I put a prize for you, for you to achieve your destiny. And, and, then, and then God really needed to deal that with my heart. And then he said to me, to a prophet, just prepare yourself. Start reading the scriptures and start praying, spending time in the presence of the Lord. And, and by the grace of God, um, that promise uh, uh, that the Lord gave me over my life became fulfilled, right? And so when we're waiting on the Lord, we have to be like, um, there's, a, there's a scripture that I, that I really, really like in Matthew 25, uh, verses 1 to 13. If we can go to the scripture very quickly, uh, Matthew 25. For this, uh, I'm going to read from the New King James Bible version, Matthew 25, and it's the parable of the We can't hear you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I had my, my mic muted. Sorry, guys. Okay, I guess I'm <laughs> sorry. I forgot to un unmute my mic. Okay, so um, I guess we start from the start. We were talking about the uh, last last thing that we were talking about. We talked about uh, waiting on the Lord, right? Uh, Romans 8, uh, 24. Um, waiting on the Lord. Um, right there in Romans, Romans 8. Chapter uh, 20, uh, sorry, Romans chapter 8, verse 25. But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. We wait for the promises of God with perseverance. And 
what I've learned in my walk with the Lord is that um, we really need, you know, to just um, to, to listen to the Lord and do what he has called us to do in the season that we are on in our lives. For example, I was sharing that um, there was a time where, where there was a word shared about, shared about my life. A prophet came, uh, Bishop Robinson. And he said to me that one day, by the grace of God, I'm, I, I was going to get to teach at the, at the Calgary Bible Training Center. And, and, but he said to me, just prepare and, and read the scriptures and spend time with the Lord and prayer and study the scriptures. He said to me, read, this, read the scriptures like a, like a crazy man for Jesus. I never forget uh, Bishop Robinson. And there was another prophet of the Lord that has said the same word for me. And I had, and I learned that yes, there was a promise in my life to be a teacher, but also there was a condition that I needed to pray, that I needed to read the scriptures, and that I needed to finish the three years of the Calgary, the Calgary Bible Training Center. So, whenever God gives you a promise, we also have to be careful to listen to what are the conditions. And when we wait for the Lord, we're waiting for that promise. We need to be active, active doing what He has called us to do. Uh, praying and seeking the Lord or, or yeah seeking the Lord being in his presence studying the scriptures and and fasting you know I believe those are three great tools that really help us grow in our in our in our walk with the Lord and about waiting on the Lord if we can go uh, to Matthew Matthew 25 verses 1 to 13 we're gonna read about the par the parable of the of the ten virgins um, Matthew 25, 1 to 13. I'm just going to give you guys a second there so you can get it on your Bibles. And I'm going to read from the New King James Bible version. So it says, uh, Matthew 25, verses... Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet their bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming, go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps and the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you. But go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, to buy, the bridegroom, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went into went went in with him to the wedding. And the door was shut. Afterwards, the Lord, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. So in here we can see that these uh, five virgins that were wise, they were wise because they decided to take oil with them. Uh, while they were waiting for the bridegroom. They didn't know the time yet, nor the hour, but it says that they were carrying their lamps also with a vessel full with oil. And oil in the Bible represents as well the Holy Spirit or the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So when we're waiting on the Lord, it's very important for us to have that intimacy with the Lord, a relationship with Him, that His Spirit will enable us to, to wait for Him and to do the things that He has called us to do because why? Because when he has promised you something, he prepares you for it so you can receive it, right? Uh, so, so we talk about we talk about hope. We talk about when we're feeling discouraged, where where things are not not going uh, well, and we're feeling hopeless. We talk about how the word of God is the one that changes our perspective. We talk about how the word of God will give us hope, right? And we need that hope. Why? Because in, in life, we're going to face circumstances. We're going to face trials. In life, we're going to face trials. And we're, we're going to need that hope. We're going to need that, uh, we're gonna need that hope. And in those trials in life that we face, like we were 
sharing that all of us we face uh, hardships in lives and we, we we face circumstances that are not easy but those trials they they really test our faith and the testing of our faith um it, pro it produces uh, a character in us it creates the character of god in us and so and and that's what we're talking about you know in order to have the character that god has we have to we have to go through the process right in order to love like the way god loves we all need to go through this process where god really refine us the bible says that our faith gets refined like gold in the fire right and so i just want us to look at um james 1 we're gonna read james 1 verses 2 to 5 And again, we're talking about uh, endurance. James 1, verses 2 to 5. Um, I'm going to read from the Christian Standard Bible. It says, consider, consider it a great joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you experience various trials, because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its full effect so that you may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. So we know that the testing of our faith will produce again that endurance. And as we were reading on, in Romans 5, that that endurance will produce character and the character of God in us, you know? And even it says in here, consider a great joy. Um, I know for me, myself, you know, we don't really consider a great joy when we, when we go through trials in our life. But with the Holy Spirit, we can have the hope that if I'm going through this, it's because God is working something out for his good, for his purpose, that he has something better for me on the other side, that he's healing my wounds. And even though I don't see it with my physical eyes right now, in my heart, I know that it's coming. And if I'm doing the will that God has asked me to do, I know that it's coming soon and that he's preparing me for something, for something great. And when it says here, um, because you know, uh, James 1 Verse 3, because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its full effect, so that you may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. So at the same time, like we're seeing in here, in this verse, endurance will help us be mature and complete. That endurance will lead you to have a character where you are complete, where you, where you lack nothing, where you're ready for that ministry, where you're ready for that business, where you're ready for for that family where you're ready for that spouse you're ready for that husband you're ready for that wife you're, you're re ready to become a parent um lacking nothing you know why because god has created his character his character in you and god has shaped you and molded you and prepare you for something great uh the enemy many times will try to come and lie to you to 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 discourage you so you don't walk on the narrow road but when we're walking on the narrow road, when we're walking in obedience, even though at times it might seem hard, we can be sure that, that and have hope that we're staying in, in the Lord's will and that what he promised over our lives, he will be fulfilled. There is a scripture that I love where Paul says to Timothy, Timothy, recall the prophecies that were spoken over your life so that you continue running the race of faith. And, and all of the promises, like my permanent residence, they came to pass by trusting in the Lord because he did it. He, he fulfilled what he promised. And I declare and I, and I, and I pray that, that God through his Holy Spirit will fulfill all of the promises that he has done to you, to your life. Another, um, the next verse on this same chapter, verse number five says, Now if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives to all generously and ungrud ungrudgingly and it will be given to him. Now, if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who gives to all gener generously and ungrudgingly, and it will be given to him. So God is willing for us to ask him in faith for wisdom. The, the reason that now I am, I'm talking about wisdom is because um, when I was reading these verses, the, the Holy Spirit really uh, prompted on my heart and, and to see that wisdom is the, is the next verse right after when you're talking about trials. So I really felt the Holy Spirit say that wisdom is the key that we need when we face many trials. Um, wisdom is, 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 is amazing. Under, wisdom and understanding and the wisdom of the Lord will point you 
to scripture, will speak to your heart, to, to seek the presence of the Holy Spirit, to seek the anointing, to lead you in fastings, to lead you and to pray for some people in your life that you need to pray for. And, and this is all through God, but it's also through his wisdom, right? So whenever we're facing a trial in our life that it might look dark and it might look like, I don't even know where this came from, we can ask to the Lord for wisdom, right? And, and we know that God will give you the wisdom to find the solution that uh, to find the solution to that to that uh, to that problem, or to or to find the 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 strength that you need in, in scriptures to 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 walk with Jesus to whatever circumstance that you're facing. Um, so we count as great joy when we experience various various trials, and because our, our faith is tested, and and that the testing of our faith will produce endurance. And endurance, when it has its full effect, it will make us mature. It will make us complete. It will make us. It will give us the character of God. Um, like you were talking about, that God every God every day, the Holy Spirit is working in our lives so that He can create His character, create His character in in, in us. And the Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. You know, and and when I talk about when I the way that I've learned the fear of the Lord, uh, one time I had uh, the opportunity of seeing an amazing uh, preacher at First Assembly Church, and he said, you know, the fear of the Lord is just recognizing God for who he is. That if he says that he's the Lord of the universe and he created all things, that we believe that and we acknowledge that and we respect him for that, you know, and and, and, and we believe that he is who he said he is, you know, and, and that's um, the fear of the Lord, and I really took that and saying that uh, God is uh, amazing and he's all powerful, you know, and, and, and I believe that he is all powerful, like he, like he says uh, he is, you know, and, and I'm just a human being, right, and he is almighty, and that is the fear of the Lord, and so the fear of the Lord is the beginning of, of all wisdom, and one of the proverbs that I, that I really like uh, talking about wisdom, it's um, Proverbs 3, uh, and we're we're just about to conclude our our teaching for the day, and we're gonna let we're gonna leave time for uh, for some scriptures. Uh, sorry for some questions. Proverbs three. Proverbs uh, three, five and six. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths and i love this because it says that every time that we live that we look for god every time that we pray that we seek him he says he promises that he will direct that he will direct us that he will direct you whenever you're facing a challenge whenever whenever you're facing a trial whenever you're facing a, a situation that um whenever you're facing a situation that is hard you know, God will give you the wisdom. We need the wisdom of God, especially in these times that we're just walking uh, right now, where all of these laws being passed and, and with the things happening uh, 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 in the United States that are very uh, uh, heartbreaking and as well with the pandemic that, that we're living on right now. Uh, it is a time to really seek the face of the Lord and just really ask him for that wisdom. And like I said, James 1, um, chapter 5, it's right after, right after when it says that when we face various trials, right after the next verse, verse five, it says, now, if anyone needs wisdom, and I really believe the Lord speaking to my heart saying that wisdom is the key when we're facing trials, right? Wisdom will also give you the understanding to know that if we're facing something that might be hard, but I am on the will of the Lord, it is because he's working something in me and he's putting something in me and he's working behind the scenes for something that is far greater and far better than I can understand, you know, and 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 if I'm going through this, is for a purpose and for a reason. Um, many times in, in my life, you know, like I was sharing with with my residents and, and waiting for three and a half years and and many other things, you know, like all of us, we we so we, we go through life and we we face things that 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 might be hard, but. If you are in the will of the Lord, if you are praying, if you're doing what he asks you to do, you're spending time with him in scriptures, you're fasting, you're working at the place that he had for you, you're in the business that he called you to, and you're being faithful, 
you can have hope in your heart that you're willing to, you're doing the will of God. And very soon, all of the promises that you've been hoping for, he will fulfill on your life. We just need to trust him. We just need to, to, to have faith, you know. And, and, and whenever we feel hopeless in the waiting, whenever we're waiting on the Lord, whenever we're hoping for a breakthrough and, and, and we get hopeless, we get discouraged. Well, that's what the scriptures are for, right? Like we were just read in Romans 15, the scriptures will give you encouragement. And the Lord, when you spend time in his presence, will give you uh, the perseverance that you need. And not only that, the scripture, every time in scripture, when we're facing a situation in our life, it's all in the Bible. Everything is in the Bible. So I, I guess my prayer is for you that you ask the Holy Spirit, what is, what is the season that I am right now, Lord? And what is the scripture that you're giving me? What is the scripture that you're giving me to help me overcome, to help me face the challenges that, I'm, that I am facing? And to really seek his presence because he's the one that's going to comfort you and it's going to carry you into that breakthrough, into the next, into the next season, and into financial breakthrough, into that home that, that that the Lord has promised you, or that relationship, that spouse, spouse that you've been praying for, a husband, a wife. If God is working in your character, we can we can we can have hope and, and rejoice. That is because that that person is coming to our lives, or that promotion, or that breakthrough. And uh, why? Because God is creating his, his, his character in us. And, and he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. He'll always be there for us. And like I said, you know, um, everything, is, uh, everything is in the scriptures. We just need to, to, to follow those instructions. And I really, really, really ro love uh, Romans, uh, Romans 15 when he talks about how to, uh, Romans 15, 4 to 6, when we talk about how to face uh, discouragement and how to how to face hopelessness and and that is to through the word of god you know and, and 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 when we get encouraged we keep walking with the lord we keep walking in our faith the lord keeps wa uh, working in us the lord keeps working in our character and, and 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 by working in our character it will produce even more hope and when when our character is being tested just like like joseph um breakthrough comes the blessing comes the promised land comes because god prepares us but he also wants us to come into the promised land he also wants us to to enter into his promises we just have to like those five um, virgins like the parable of the virgins that some of them were waiting but they carry the oil with them we need to carry the oil of the lord with us we need to carry the anointing of god everywhere we go we need to if we're gonna faith if we're gonna face uh any we need to do it with God. We need to do it in intimacy with Him. And we need His endurance to be to be poured uh, to be poured down into our hearts to help us um, to help us face the hard times and the and the challenges. So um, I guess that um, that's all that I that I really had uh, for class today. Uh, um, if you guys have any questions or or anything, or we can also have a time of prayer. If we can. We can pray for for your needs as well. Yes, I have a question. Amen, brother. Yes, uh, thank you so much. Praise the and, Lord. Uh, uh, I'm very happy that you are a graduate of this school. And uh, uh, my question is: Are these particular time, this uh, pandemic uh, time, when uh, people are discouraged. Now you depth so much on uh, hope, endurance, and waiting upon the Lord, the author and finisher of our feet. Amen. Now, you know, without hope, one is sick, one is dispressed. It, I mean, it's discouraged. Now, what advice do you have for us as a Bible, I mean, Calgary Bible Training Center student on how to overcome circumstances like this? Amen, brother. That's a very good question. So, uh, praise the Lord. You know, uh, first of all, uh, thank you so much for your time and thank you for your question. Um, I believe, you know, uh, we're facing uh, circumstances in life right now with this pandemic, specifically speaking of this pandemic, 
where the enemy has really tried to come, sorry to try to come with a spirit of fear with a spirit of torment with a spirit of, of frustration that's what the tactic of the enemy is and that's why we really just need to ask the holy spirit to show us things with his perspective with his eyes what does the lord think about this pandemic well what the enemy meant for evil when we read the bible sickness and disease is never from god the enemy came to steal to kill and to destroy but the son of man came to bring life and life in abundance says in john 10 so all of these things that, that are not from the Lord, the Bible says that God will turn them for good. God will take what the enemy meant for evil and turn it for good because everything works for good for those who love God. Everything works for good for those who love God. And I believe as well, when we look at, uh, at this circumstance in the eyes of God, we can see that a lot of families have come together, have spent more time together. The church has come to a point in, in time where we realize that the church church is not a building that the church is you and me and all of us carrying christ inside of us and as well fellowshiping together and worshiping the lord together of course and going to church is very important as well but the church is not the building the church is all of us right because we are the body of christ at the end of the day at the, at the end of the day that that building is going to stay here but all of us we're going to go with jesus so um, we are the body of Christ. And that's one of the things that the church have to come to realize during this, this pandemic situation. Um, like I said, you know, uh, it's, been, it's been very, very, very hard for some people. And, 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 and it's been a time where, where our faith um, really was tested. You know, I know for myself in this pandemic, there was a time when, when, when the, 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 the situation with my papers happened and and I'm, I, I was waiting on my, on my health uh, card um, to get my new health card number uh, because of some uh, health situation that I, that I was facing. And, and many things that, that started happening around my life with my finances and everything that, that I really felt very hopeless, you know. But it was in this time where, where I was hopeless that the Lord gave me that, that scripture, gave me this, uh, this book of how to get through hard times. And in that book mentioned that scripture about the Romans uh, 15, uh, 5, you know, that the Lord has given us uh, the, the scriptures to give us instruction in all of the areas of our lives. And that the God himself, the God of all comfort, the God of all peace will comfort you. The God of all peace is the one that's going to, give you that perseverance in your heart and 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 not only that that when you read the scriptures that you're going to be encouraged so our faith got tested very 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 hard this time in in, in, in this pandemic but you as bible students uh of this this program i can i can say that praise the lord that you were obedient to the calling of the lord in your heart that you that you came to these meetings on zoom that you attended class on zoom and, and you didn't let these things to, to be on the way of what God has, has and is preparing you for. Because God put on your heart the desire to attend this school and you're being obedient and you're growing in your faith. And, and I, there's been many challenges, I believe, for many of you to, to even try to come into the computer at the right time. And, and many of you have kids and all of these things, but you have been obedient. And, 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 and praise the Lord. And, and I want to really honor you for that. And you can be really, really feel on your heart, you know. Uh, you can be hopeful or you can be, you can be uh, very, very, um, how do I say this, that you are doing the will of God. You know, you can have that security on your heart that you're doing the will of God, that you're learning about the Bible, that you're growing in your faith, that you're not letting this darkness to overcome you but you are letting Jesus Christ, who is your Lord and Savior, overcome for you, that you're growing in your faith, that you're growing in your maturity, that you're growing in your spirituality. And I believe at the end of the day that this thing is going to pass very soon. Right now we're seeing all the restrictions being lifted, and all of these things are going to go away. But when we come to the other side, we're going to come with more wisdom, with more strength, with more maturity, with... with uh, yeah, with the character of God being uh, being really developed in uh, in our hearts. I guess I guess that's uh, that was uh, the answer, brother. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.
I like to add a little bit to the answer. Is that okay, Alejandro? Amen. Yeah, go ahead, brother. Amen, brother. I think I think how Alejandro started his course was the most powerful part was he used his testimony. And if you read 11, uh, Revelation 12, 11, it says, and they overcame him, and they're talking about the enemy or the accuser or the devil. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to death. So they're talking about how the power of your testimony is going to bring hope. The power of your testimony is going to bring life to people. And it's actually going to overcome the enemy. So when the enemy is here trying to bring despair upon people, bring hopelessness, like Alejandro has spoken, your testimony, believe, believe that you have a testimony because you have a testimony. Whatever it is, it's great. And people need to know it. People need to see it because that's what's going to actually overcome this enemy. And so just an add on to what Alejandro said was in this time when people are feeling hopelessness, people are feeling despair and depression and nowhere to go and, and they need hope. An answer is your testimony can bring them hope. They, through your life and through your testimony, it can bring you hope. And that's why I like how Alejandro started that way is he started that the character of God starts with your testimony because it shows who God is and shows hope and shows perseverance. It shows it all. And that's how you can show it to others, right? That's just an add-on. Amen, brother. That was so good, bro. Praise the Lord. Um, and just to just like uh, what what Jonathan said, it was so amazing because even if your testimony, if you didn't struggle, if you didn't struggle with drugs like I did, or you you haven't struggled with depression or anxiety like I did, or you struggle with other things, you know, and it could be the smallest things, you know, um, whatever it is, you know, like. Um, like uh, I one time went to a workshop where they where they teach us how to tell our testimony, uh, very simple, you know. And I remember the guy said, you know, uh, for an example, hey, uh, there was a time in my life where where I was feeling hopeless and and I was feeling like I had no direction, but then I met Jesus, and now I have purpose and direction, and my life has changed uh, amazingly, you know. And even by by those simple words. Um, you can you can really touch a person's life you know and all of us we have all of us we have a testimony the lord has done something in our lives all of us god has delivered you from a situation god has blessed your family god has brought breakthrough in in, in an area or or maybe you know your heart was broken and god healed it or maybe before we used to struggle with with uh, pride and, and the lord has shown us humility and has given us purpose even the simplest uh, things, you know, they, they can become very powerful. Uh, just like Jonathan was saying, all of us, we have a testimony. And, and you know, I really felt a prompting from the Holy Spirit to share this right now that if you are right now in a moment of despair where you're feeling lonely and you're feeling hopeless and, and I feel like a spirit of abandonment that I, I pray against this in Jesus Christ's mighty name. The, the best way to do is just Put some worship music on. Praise, put some worship music on and just lay on your bed and start meditating on the love of the Lord and let and pray for the Holy Spirit to come on you and just to come and, 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 and take a hold of you and just to really touch your heart with his love. Pray the blood of Jesus over your heart over your home and and, and and yeah, just pray the blood of Jesus over, over your bed. And, and just when you're, when you're laying down, just meditate on the love of the Lord. Call on the name of the Lord. The Bible says that when we call on the name of the Lord, we will not be ashamed. Whenever, if you're right now in a, in, a, in a place where you're really feeling depressed, it starts playing worship songs and, and start calling just on the name of the Lord and, 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 and His Holy Spirit. I pray that, that God, I don't know who is this for, Father God, but I just pray right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that whoever... Father, God needs this right now, that your Holy Spirit will just come, and Father, and, and fill that person with your love, with your anointing, Lord God, with your amazing peace, with your joy, Father. God, I pray that, Father, your love, just like, Father, when the angel, when the Spirit of the Lord, when the Spirit of God overshadow Mary, Lord God, 
Father, I pray that the Spirit of the Lord overshadows, Lord God, this person with your love. Father God, just that love of a father, Lord God, just that love that breaks all fears, that casts all fear, God. Any spirit of abandonment, any spirit of rejection, any spirit of feeling lonely and depressed, Father, any spirit of, of all of these things, we bind them in Jesus' name. We cast them out to the dry places. We command them never to return again in Jesus' name. And we pray for your spirit to come and comfort, Father, this person right now with your love, with your grace, with your love. Father God, with your understanding, we pray for a supernatural movement of the Spirit, even in their room, that the Holy Spirit just fills their room right now, God, and you give them a big, big hug with your Heavenly Father arms, just like the prodigal son, that you give them a big, big, big hug, and you fill their hearts with your love, that they become rivers of living water, God, and that your love just flows through them, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, God. We give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank Praise you. The Lord. Praise the Lord, guys. It was an honor to, to share with you. And this is my second class. So thank you so much for, for bearing with me. And, and uh, we give all the glory and praise and honor to the Lord. Amen. Alejandro? Yep. Hi, it's Simi. Hello. So, hi. So I just want to comment. Um, I think me and you, we have almost the same kind of testimony. Okay. But mine is not with drugs. Mine is my, same thing with my PR, you know? Like you said, you got yours, like you waited for almost two years. Mm -hmm. Mine was almost three years. And those were one of the darkest periods in my life like i didn't want to do anything illegal to get it illegal so i had to stay because that's just the way i was brought up and i didn't want to do anything you know so but when you were saying something about your PR and waiting and oh god why i waited for almost three years and it's not easy i was so i had depression i was so angry i was mad at god i felt alone so it was, when you were talking, you brought back feelings, you know, like all those times. But I thank God for perseverance because it's not easy to wait, but perseverance and actually just sticking to God and knowing you cannot go um, the other way. You know, even if somebody, some people were suggesting, oh, do this, do that. No, you know, same thing. I had to get a lawyer. I had to pay so much money. But at the end of the day, I got the testimony. I didn't Amen. do it the right, the wrong way. I did it the right way. I got Amen. a lawyer and he helped me. So wh when you were talking about it, I just remembered. And anytime, I, I'm just grateful to God because anytime I remember, I go take my PR card and Amen. I kneel to God and I say thank you. Because Amen. I will have strained, but I didn't. I will have, out of my depressive mood, I will have gone and take alcohol or whatever. But because I don't drink and I stood by by my upbringing in Christ, Amen. you know. So when you mentioned that, it just took me back to that testimony. So whenever I feel down, and even for anybody, um, just remember what God has done for you in the past, right? Amen. You you Amen. remember the testimony. Sometimes I take sometimes I take my card and I kneel down and I say thank God because I was all alone and I did it myself, and I pray to God. And he helped me. Amen. It was very dark. Sorry. Uh, yeah. It was very dark. And I felt hopeless. I, don't, I felt really, where <clears> there was really, there was no, there was, I felt really like there was no light there. I couldn't, um, I couldn't move ahead. But God sent someone to me. Amen. And that person is a lawyer. And the person helped me. I thank God that God provided the money. You said God provided you someone that gave you the money. Yeah. God provided the money for me Amen. and he helped. Me. So I, I, I know anyone going through such depressive mood or whatever, somebody, you can come out of it, right? Like you can, God can help you and send people to you. Even when you were alone at the end of the day, like when I got my PR, I was so thankful that I didn't go the wrong way. And I was so thankful that God kept me. I didn't do anything wrong. I was just, the only thing that maybe I suffered was depression and I was angry, but I didn't really sweep, you know, but 
I remained in God. And I will say for anyone that is maybe hopeless, there is light at the end of the tunnel. There is light at the end of the tunnel. And always remember what God has done for you in the past. Like true. I said, I look at my peer and I kneel to my God and I say, thank you for what you have done for me. You know, mm -hmm. I didn't say, but I still remain, I still remain true to God. You know, I still remember all the things you have done for me. Even, even if there are some things he has not done, but I remember the only thing he gave to me, Pierre. You know, and I stayed here. And I, and the thing is that during that during those times, I couldn't work. They said, go go get somebody's card and work illegally. But I wouldn't do it because I'm always scared about doing something wrong. So i rather go the right way, no matter how long it took. You know, so I thank God that after one year of waiting for my, applying for the PR, I got, I got um, my work permit, which I could work. You know, mm -hmm. God made it possible for me. So I started earning some income. So let me just round it up by saying thank you for your testimony. You brought out some feelings in me that I remember how God helped me. I persevered. You know, I stayed on the word of God. I listened to people who encouraged me. I listened to messages all the time. You know, I was, I didn't have a father or a mother that could encourage me because I'm only here with my sister. So I have none of, my sister tried her best, but it was very hard, you know, so I had to rely on God because I have no father and mom, you know, so I had to rely on God to help me, you know, to actually, you know, speak to me and actually remaining in the word of God. So I thank you for your testimony and thank you, you know, for, it made me realize how God is good. You know, he, even if you keep on praying and you keep on believing in him. And again, for anyone listening, you can fall and you can stand up. You can fall a million times to stand up. You don't Amen. stay down. You, Amen. I've had depressing times where uh, I fall, I cry, you know, I, I feel like I'm all alone, you know. But the thing is that next thing I pray to God and I forget about it and I get up. The thing Amen. is that don't stay down but get up all the time. And God will see you through. He sent me money. He helped me with the, with the, with the lawyers that processed my paper. And now I have it. So I, And I have a job. You know, so I thank God for everything. So thank you, Alejandro, for oh, making you remember what God has done for me. And many things for other people too. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise glory, God. Be, glory be to God. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's awesome, Alejandro. Mi nieto. Praise the Lord, Mark. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mi amiga, Mark. Amen. ¿Cómo Mi estás? Nieto. Muy bien, gracias. Praise the Lord, Mark. Praise the Lord. I'm praying for you, brother. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I'm teaching next week, too. Praise the Lord, Mark. What a blessing, eh? Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. You brought Amen. some powerful scriptures forward, Alejandro. Very good. Oh, praise the Lord. Glory be to, to God, Mark. You know, it just uh, amazes me, you know, how the Lord will lay something on your heart because maybe there's somebody else that needs to hear it right and, mm -hmm. and even even as uh simi was right now sharing you know that is confirmation from for me as well because uh, as she is sharing you know how god helped her with her residence it helps me assure my faith that indeed it was no man who gave me my residence it was god right that's right and that god has the power to sustain us uh simi said something very very true you know um i didn't want to do anything illegal either you know so what i what i did i was i was volunteering for my for my rent and for my food and i don't know what was uh your situation simi but it you know like when you're facing a circumstance when you cannot work and you don't want to break the law it looks impossible, but this is when the Holy Spirit, when God comes and where there is nothing, God creates something out of nothing. And the God in heaven and the earth, he, he, he's still alive, he's still well, he still provides miracles, and he's still working for us. And, and I believe, you know, all we have to do is to open up our hearts and keep trusting in him and keep walking with him. And we're going to see his glory in the land of the living. Amen. 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 Hello, can you hear me? Yes, hello, Tina. Praise the Lord. <laughs> okay, I just, uh, I'm so happy for this your topic. It was really good. And um, there's something I just want to, the Holy Spirit lead me to say. 
uh, this um, the character of God is is really powerful. But where I want to talk is uh, the the term virgin. So the, this term virgin is not only teaching us our character, wisdom, but what I learned that the Holy Spirit is also saying is teaching us to be ready for the coming of the Christ. Amen. Because um, uh, those people that are not ready, the, the, the door was locked. So the Holy Spirit is telling me this is the way it's going to happen when Christ is going to come and uh, come to take his own people. Many people are not going to be ready and they're going to lose it. So I'm just encouraging everyone, including me, I'm not righteous, everyone to try your best to get ready for the coming of Christ. Because Christ is coming. Amen. Many people are asking, is Christ coming or not? But when I read um, John uh, chapter 14 and 15, it says that Christ is coming. And Christ is said, I'm going to my father. I'm going to prepare to come back. And he said that it's only those people who obey my, my, my command and and the uh, follow my teaching that will receive me. So this ten, ten, uh, the ten virgin is teaching us to get ready because if we are not ready, we are not gonna see Christ and uh, everything we are doing will be a waste of time. So thank you. Praise the Lord. Yeah, I believe it's true. I believe we have to be ready and, and we, cannot, we cannot fall asleep. You know, we have to be always Acknowledging that that Jesus might come and we don't know the time yes. or the hour. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. That was so powerful. Yes, it is. Yeah, we have to be ready. We don't know the time nor, nor, nor the hour, and yes, and, and we need the Holy Spirit. To help us right uh, yeah the Holy Spirit reminds us um, to, to always be walking with the Lord and 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 like um, I was uh, see me was sharing you know whenever Satan what he will try to do will try to get you out of your 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 path out of the narrow road the Bible says that we walk on the narrow road and very few are the ones who find it so I believe all of us by the grace of God we're walking on the narrow road we're, 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 we're we know that God has a purpose for lives, for being obedient. And what mm -hmm. Satan wants to do is he wants to take you off the path, but he can. He's been defeated yes. since he's been defeated since the cross of Calvary over yes. two, over two thousand years ago. So your soul has been saved and, and all of all we have to do is to finish our race here on earth and we rely on rely on God and God's grace and with the help of the Holy Spirit, we're gonna finish our race. In Jesus' name. All of us. Mm. Praise the Lord. Amen. So I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it to uh to Jonathan Scott. So uh you can you can you can uh if you wanna say a few words, brother. I'm I'm doing good. <laughs> you, know, you know, I, I just wanna reiterate on that whole testimony thing. Like I'm I'm trying to just be a bystander, but then you know, Simi comes on and she says that the power of your testimony made my testimony stronger. Then someone in the chat is like, hey, that happened to me too. And it's like a snowball effect that everyone is, bam, that's, that's my testimony. Yeah, that's my testimony. And God did that for me. God did this. That's the power of testimony. That's what I want to say is that that's how amazing God is. He mm. took like... You know, I thought the most powerful thing was Alejandro, you know, he had gone through drugs and all that other stuff, but no, he used the other part of his testimony. The, you know, I, I thought it wasn't as big, but it was right. Cause it related to other people and how powerful it was. It was just, it exploded. I don't know if you guys noticed in someone, in, someone else in the chat, uh, I, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Mary Marciel, 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 Marciel. Okay. I think so. Is that correct? I don't know. Yes, it's correct. It's Marisol. 
Marisol? Yes. I, in fact, the Lord shortened my weight of my PR. Yeah. And Alejandro will have his PR this year. Yes, amen. 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 So it's just yeah. see how like power of testimony is just, we get to stand and the enemy can't hold that against us. And Amen. We, all, we can continuously share. And guess what? We're all going to be grasped like, hey, that's me too. Hey, that. And that's the power of testimony. That was, I, We just saw it. I don't know if anyone was paying attention, but I, that's all I saw was just, wow. That is how God works right there. And that's how, that's how you can relate even to other people. And then, you know, in this time, they've lost hope or anything. Those little things just blow, will we'll just cause, blow, wow, well, they blow behind, I was going to say, but they just cause a snowball effect. And people around will just on, honestly can relate. And it just fires them up. I just like was feeling this like fire. I don't know, I don't know if any of you know what uh, Super Saiyan is, but. <laughs> You're right. It, it just this fire that is around you and it just that's what fire the fires me up like when you hear that kind of stuff that mm -hmm. man that's the power of testimony i just wanted to say that that's all uh, can i, I add something for that it, yeah please and you know this testimony that i have i i belong to actually to evangelism ministry and this is one of my powered god has given me and holy spirit giving me this powerful tool to present my testimony to other people. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we are doing street evangelism actually, and this story brings other people to Christ too. Yeah, amen. Be giving some hope. Yep. Like, out of nowhere, a stranger just popped in and called you and said to you that God called me, and he said to me that you need money for your PR. So it's totally strange thing. I mean, it's a divine calling for someone to help you out with this. So yeah, it's a really big thing. So yeah, it, it's really mm. powerful tool too for evangelism ministry to present your testimony to others because mm. that's your own personal encounter with the Lord. Yep. Mm. Praise the Lord. Yes. He's just that good. Yeah, he's, he's a God of possibility and a God of miracles. So, yeah. And it, and if you are in a depression mode, just count your blessing. As uh, Alejandro just told that also have praise and worship and count every blessing that you have. Because that's, that's where you can get the love of Christ. That, where you can remind yourself that God loves you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That was amazing. Thank you for sharing, Maricel. That was uh, beautiful. Amazing. Praise yes. the Lord. You're welcome. And uh, I just, I just, uh, I feel on my heart just to say, you know, we need to believe. Um, like she was uh, just sharing that a, a person, a stranger, just just came, and and gave her the money, right? Um, I believe that that's who God is. You know, like my friend that came and 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 I didn't ask for it. He said to me that he heard about my case. And because he had heard about my case, he decided to come and help me because the Lord put it on his heart. So this is what we need to believe. We need to believe that God is a God that can provide uh, when, when, um, when there's no provision that he can send somebody to provide for you and, and bless you financially, bless you with anything, with the keys for a home or for a car, whatever it is, you know, um, I, the Bible says that as a, man, as a man believes in his heart, so it is. So we really need to, to, on our hearts, really believe that God can do absolutely anything that he wants to bless us and that things do fall in your lap, you know. Um, one time I was driving with my pastor down the highway and, and we found a $50 bill flying in front of, our, our, of, of his car. And, 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 and then we stopped and the pastor said that, that God has sent that for me because I was praying for financial breakthrough. And when I grabbed the bill, I, I, I felt the Holy Spirit say, who says that I cannot make rain money? And I'm like, oh my gosh, you know? So the Holy Spirit is able to provide. How many times the Holy Spirit has not provided for us financially through a friend, through somebody? And that's how God works, right? So I, I just felt encouraged to just tell you guys that believe in your heart 
that God will provide for you and that like he, he can send anybody mm -hmm. to bless you, right? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Any other questions for Alejandro? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, brother. Yes. Uh, one of the messages of Christ was that uh, he went about doing good. And that was the testimony. And, uh, and that was, I mean, uh, one of the characteristics of God, love. Mm. But what is actually happening nowadays, you see, people that love, the love, uh, we don't so much feel that kind of love any longer. That is true, brother. Mm, it's true. Um, you know, the Bible says that we will be known by the love that we have. You know, the, the way that they will believe you that you are a Christian is by the way you love other people. And in my life, God has really tested me, sending people in my life that they're not nice to me. They're rude to me. They really try to annoy me. They say bad things about me. Mm -hmm. um, they try to put me down. They say very cruel things about me. And, and what do I do? Well, the Bible says, love your enemies, you know, and this is um, another verse that I absolutely love. It says that do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good, you know? So the way that we fight these things is with love. You know, when somebody says something to you that is not nice and that's basically horrible, you just on your heart, you say, Holy Spirit, I know that this person is saying this because this person has a broken heart and, and I just bless that person and, and, I, and I just love my enemies in Jesus name, you know, bless them in Jesus name. Don't even pay attention to that, you know, and just believe that the love of God, it's in you. And, and sometimes you might not feel like it, but the Holy Spirit, it's already there. So you just have to release it sometimes. You just have to really ask the Lord for that wisdom. God, how do I pray for my enemies? How do I pray for people that are persecuting me? How do I pray for people that are putting me down? You know, one time I was accused of stealing something that I didn't steal. You know, I was falsely accused. And, and, and I was like, gosh, like, you know that I didn't do anything wrong. And now these people are spreading lies about me. And the Lord just told me, just pray for them pray for them and I will work and then uh, the Lord have it all all fixed and I'll figure it out and at the end of the day you know I, I was able to talk to the owner and the owner said to me Alejandro don't worry about it I knew right away when they told me that was not true and I was like wow praise the Lord you know so the Holy Spirit is working behind the scenes and 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 love is a very powerful tool you know we need to be filled with the love of God so we can share the love of God to other people you know Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Does anyone else have a question or maybe we can pray? Does anyone have a prayer um, that uh, they need uh, anything that um, they wish to pray for? We can pray. Ooh. Does anyone have a prayer request? Well, Alejandro, my prayer request, it's in me. My prayer request is um, just let's pray that God should keep me in, the, in his presence. Because Amen. I know sometimes we are idle or sometimes things, like sometimes most people are busy too. But um, the grace to be, to remain in the presence of God, no matter the distractions, because there are distractions I know I face. So um, that God should... Give me that grace to stay in prayer, 
you know, because I want to pray. Sometimes I get distracted, but um, yeah, give me that grace to remain in prayer and and stronger every day. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. So Heavenly Father, right now, God, we uh, we just lift a uh, Simi in prayer, God. So I thank you, Lord God, that the Bible says that you have a purpose, that you have a plan, and you have a destiny for her, Lord God. I thank you, Father, that she's special in your eyes, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, for your presence, God, to just feel the atmosphere wherever she is, Lord God, in her home. Father God, that your presence, Lord God, would just feel the atmosphere, would change the atmosphere. God, I pray, Lord God, that, Father, as your Holy Spirit, Lord God, just touches uh, her heart. There will be a release, Lord God, of a mantle of praise, Lord God. We pray for a release of a mantle of praise, of an anointing of praise, Lord God. That, Father, her heart will just have so much joy, Lord God, and so much gratitude and so much love for you, Lord God. That, Father, she's just going to feel on her heart to praise you, Lord God, just to spend time in your presence, Father. And I pray, Father, for a deeper, Father, uh, 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 encounter with your presence, God, for, with who you are, Father, that even as, as she prays, that your Holy Spirit will come, Lord God, and she will encounter your presence in a new level, Father God. And Father, I just pray the same thing for all of us, Lord God, and all of my brothers and sisters, Lord God, that Father, as we seek your face, that Father, we will encounter you in a more intimate way, in a more personal way, Father God, that we get the revelation of who you are, Father, as you are a loving Father, you are our Abba. Father, you desire for us a good, Lord God, and I thank you, Father, that you have a purpose, you have a plan, you have a destiny for each and every one of us, Lord God. We pray for miracles, Lord God. We pray for provi uh, provision miracles where, where, with finances. We pray for financial breakthroughs right now in the, main, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We pray for all, 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 all debts and, and bills that need to be paid, Lord God. Uh, Father, that you will provide a miraculous way to pay for all of these debts and to pray for all of these bills, Lord God. Father, we pray, Father, for every need of every heart, that, Father, of the, of the amazing men and women that are here, Father God, in this class. We pray, Father, you know their every needs, God. We pray, Lord God, that through your Holy Spirit, that through your anointing, that through your power, every need shall be fulfilled, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. Father, we pray that we, Father, we encounter you, Lord God, in a deeper way as we re as you reveal the scripture to us, Father, that even as we open up our Bibles, God, that the the Holy Spirit will just speak truth to us, that we will fill our minds with the truth and our, and our hearts will be so full of hope, Lord God, and that by spending presence, uh, time in prayer, time in the presence of God, that your love will be put into our hearts, Father, that we can go out into a broken world and just love on them, Lord God, as we were sharing, Father, brother, we're sharing how love is so important, Father, Father, creating us, your image, Lord God. Father, the Bible says that you loved us first, that you gave your one and only son to forgive all of our sins, Lord God. Pay the penalty for all of our sins, but he came back to life to give us a promise of eternity and that his spirit can come inside of our hearts and make us born again. Father, I pray for anyone who has not been born again, that you, Father God, that you make him born again through your spirit, Lord God, that your spirit touches them wherever they are, God, that they become born again and father god awaken to you awaken to your presence awaken to your spirit lord god and that your spirit moves powerfully and mightfully in the lives of everyone listening god that your spirit will provide a miracle god and a breakthrough we pray against fear we pray against anxiety we pray against uh, anything that wants to come against them lord god we pray again all of these things and in the mighty name of jesus we declare god that the purpose that you have for everyone's life is fulfilled Lord god in jesus christ's mighty name we pray against every chain and every bondage god we pray that all of these things are broken and set loose right now in jesus christ's mighty name father anything that was that every anything that was an obstacle that was that was not letting the, the 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 blessings of heaven to come, Father God. We we pray that all of these obstacles are broken and destroyed in Jesus Christ's mighty name, and that all of the blessings of heaven that you have for your sons and your daughters. 
come to pass and that they receive them in their hands, Lord God, because that's the inheritance of them as the children of God, Lord God. I thank you that no weapon created or formed shall prosper against them, Lord God. And we condemn every tongue of judgment that has risen against them, Lord God. Every evil person, every evil tongue that has risen against your sons and your daughters, Lord God. Father, we condemn all of those words, Father, and we pray for those people, Lord God, that you will change their hearts, Father, that you will transform them, God, and that you will do with them what you have done with us, Father God, that they are blinded, but we pray for the salvation of their souls, Lord God. But as well, I pray for protection, God. The Bible says that there are angels camping around those who love the Lord. We pray for that hedge of protection over everyone, Father God, who has placed his trust in you. We pray for a good night's sleep, and I pray Pray, Father God, that even as, as we are in our homes, that your spirit will just come and your spirit will just minister to us wherever we are and wherever we are in our hearts, revealing more deeply the love that you have for us because you are our Abba and you know us. You know how many hairs we have in our heads and we know all of us by name, Lord God, and you know the things that we like and that we love because you care so much for us. I pray that you will reveal how much you care for our brothers and sisters. In Jesus' name, God, we give you all the praise and glory, God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. God bless you guys. Thank you so much yeah, for everything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you for thank sharing. You for Good night, everybody. Have a blessed weekend. Yeah. Bless you guys. Good night. Thank you. Good night, everybody. God bless you, Alejandro. Adios, Mark. Muchas gracias, amiga. Adios. Bye-bye. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Bless you guys. You are definitely free to go. Thank you, Alejandro. You're amazing. Praise the Lord, brother. Glory be to awesome. God. Glory be to God. Mm -hmm. Thank all of you guys for your faithfulness and continuously coming. And those are, that are new. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bless you. I hope to that see you a, next week. That was a nice class. Good. Next week, we're, we're here again. Please come back. <laughs> of course. Yeah, I will. Amen. I just have a quick question. Uh, quick question. Absolutely. Um, I heard from you that uh, this month, the, this session will be finished this month. The recession? No, this section. For... This section. Yes. Yeah. So we're in like the fourth term for the people that started at the beginning uh, in October. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we're in the fourth term and they'll finish. Okay. And you can you can definitely carry on and just um, learn with us in the last, and then we'll we're gonna have fellowship throughout the summer. Okay. You can uh, start up with us again when we do the the beginning in October again. Okay. So in June, everything um, this section will be finished, right? And then until October again. Yeah, so we'll have we'll have two conferences in July though. Oh, okay. Times conference, and that's just that's open for everyone, and also a marriage conference in July. But the teaching courses, yes, they end in June. Oh, okay. And exam in July. Yeah, so the the exams for fourth term will be July second. Okay. And then the two conferences will be on July uh, 9th and 16th. Okay. Okay, so the next is marriage? Pardon me? Is it eight months training? Yeah, so it's uh, from October usually till June. Just okay. we, got, we got slowed down a bit because of COVID. Okay. So it's just going over a little bit. But we definitely want you here because it, you know, it'll keep you uh, just in fellowship with us, and we get to know who you are. <laughs> oh, definitely, I'll be, I'll be every Thursday. Yeah. By God's grace. 
Yeah, and we're hoping through even after the conferences, we want to just meet every Thursday and just see everybody. And okay. I don't. How else do you connect? <laughs> it's That'd hard, be nice, <laughs> right? Of course, we can talk and we can. Talk. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. How do you pronounce your name again? Uh, Kumba K U M B A. Kumba. Yes, Kumbaya. Oh, Kumbaya. No, no, it's Kumba, but just. I know. <laughs> just to remember. <laughs> to remember. <laughs> Kumba. And you? Jonathan. 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 Or John. Okay. Whichever. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, nice to meet you, Brian Jonathan. Bless you. Hey, sister behind you. Pardon me? Pardon me? The sister behind you, close to you, what's, what's her name, too? Oh, Angela. Oh. It's there. Yeah. Angela, okay. yeah. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah, okay, it's on the screen. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. nice to meet you too. Yeah. Oh, sorry. The first one okay. on July, is it the marriage conference, right? Jennifer? Okay. No, bye -bye. I'm talking... yeah, yeah, bye. bye. Have a good yeah. night. Yeah. Okay, Jonathan. Yeah, Jonathan is me. I'm just um, asking the, the the marriage conference, is it the one in July 9th? Yes, we're hoping July 9th, uh -huh. marriage conference, and uh -huh. end times on the 16th. In time? End times. In times, okay. End times. Are they going to be online again? Oh, we are coming together. <laughs> yeah, it's all up to the government, not us. So it might just be online. Okay, thank you and good night to everyone. Good night. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. I'll see you later, my brother. Thanks, Alejandro. God bless you, everyone. Have a